And it's uh, easier said than done. Ignore the cameras. All right. My name is Petra. Um, I embraced it Islam one year ago when I was 33. I came from Czech Republic. Well, when I was born, it was Czechoslovakia. And my hometown is Kladno, which is the biggest uh, nearest city to Prague. Uh, my family, well, um, we, I don't, I cannot say we were religious because back in communism there was um, the support of uh, the church was not there. So people who wanted to be religious, they were practicing mostly at home and not openly. So. In our family, we were celebrating Christmas and Easter, but we didn't know, or I was not told how to pray. There was no Sunday school uh, when I was a um, kid, or any re religious studies at school. So I was not um, com like exposed to any religious activities. Um, we didn't go to church even during Christmas. We just, it was just a family gathering and happy times when we were exchanging gifts. The first time I got exposed to religious people and um, people who were praying was when I came to UAE. That was in 2007. And I was working in an airline. And whenever we took off with the plane, I saw my colleagues sitting next to me praying. Either they would make the cross and they would pray they were Christians or um, because it was Arabic airline before every takeoff there was uh, a prayer showing before they will start doing the safety video. So hearing the prayer before every takeoff it has an impact on you. Like you already know the words and you are looking forward because then everything had to stop. We couldn't do any service and we were just there sitting and waiting. So these moments, like, I would, like, inside me say, in, like, let's have a good flight and safe flight and come back safe. So I did it for seven years, all these inside prayers, like, make this flight safe, let us all be safe. But I didn't know the meaning and the reasons or why, so I was just doing it. And then with all my friends around here that I made, some of them were Muslims, so I start, started to ask questions and be interested more in the reasons. Um, what is the purpose? Why they are doing this? Uh, why they are not celebrating other holidays but only eat? Like, why is that? Uh, so by getting the answers, I was um, slowly more attracted to Islam. Like, my heart got open. And alhamdulillah, that was the way how I slowly started to learn and comparing also other religions because coming from or being seeing Christian Christianity as the biggest religion, I was trying to get the differences uh, between Christianity and Islam. Leaning forward to what was true like in Islam, um, it made m everything made, m made more sense. So and Islam is teaching like everybody should know, everybody should know how to pray. Like you don't need a priest to forgive you. You can, you, it's just you and your relationship with Allah that he will be the most forgiving whatever you are doing. So it's your relationship with him. You don't need anybody in the middle. So re what really got to me most was um, by learning the differences between Christianity and Islam, finding that Christianity divided into multiple categories, having different sects, and Islam stayed the true, the original one since the beginning, it didn't change. So those same words, the same prayers, the same acts that were performed years ago, are still valid and by doing them, by acting them, you are having the relationship straight away with Allah. There is no, no priest in the middle, there is nobody, uh, you just need the Quran, you just need the book, you just need to read and educate yourself and the guidance comes straight away. Of course you might have some questions, you might need some help and 
the imam from the nearest uh, mosque or s Islamic center is there for you to guide you or explain to you further if you have questions. But once you learn it, once you start practicing it, then you can go ahead and you don't need any more of guidance how to do it properly. Only maybe just to refresh yourself if you get lost again. But you don't need a priest, you don't need to pay for forgiveness, you just pray and you will be forgiven because Allah is the most for forgiveful. So, yeah. Before converting, by living here uh, in the UAE um, more than seven years and interacting with the local people, with the Muslim friends, I never encountered anybody pushing me to come to Islam. It had to come from me, the first step. So once I did it and I converted, suddenly everybody was, was interested. Like I became like a celebrity. It was so funny and so nice. Like people at work, now I change um, my job. I'm not flying anymore. I'm in the hospital. That's very nice. Uh, so uh, before converting, my concerns were, were, of course, for my family, how they would uh, accept it. And my mom, she has this sense, of course, I'm her daughter, so she's connected with me. So whenever we were Skyping, she would be like, there's something on your mind, you know, there's something going on, what's happening? And when I talk to her and I explain to her my feelings and what I want to do, even before, she would be like, you're adult, it's your life. If this is the way that you need to live your life, then you have to do it. You cannot hold back and then say, we didn't encourage you. It's uh, it's your life. So I was uh, blessed in a way that I got the support even before. This is my new life. I want to be a good person. Like nobody will say, oh, do you really want to be a good person? <laughs> no, nobody. You just need to make the first step and uh, every, everything will fall into place. That it's not bad. It's nothing, nothing is wrong. And with the time, they will overcome. Maybe if it will be your parents or your best friends, maybe give them one year and they will see that you really didn't change. You're just praying and you're worshipping one God. And that, that's the whole change. Ask yourself also these questions. Do you believe that there is only one God? Do you believe that he doesn't have any partners? Do you believe that there is an afterlife? If you ask all these questions and your answer is yes, then, then there should nothing should stop you because you never know if you will wake up the next day and go to the nearest mosque, go to the nearest Islamic center, ask them for advice. Every Iman, he will ask you again, like, are you sure? Does it come from your heart? And if it comes, then there is uh, no reason why another day you should not be a Muslim.